さんこんばんは。私はアンレさん。プレゼンテーションを楽しんでください。I hope I did it well. <laughs>、um, so we have a few minutes to discuss、uh, L2C benchmarks. L2C stands for second level cash. So I'm going to change things a little bit.、Uh, my colleagues have been talking about Docker and containers and virtualization. I'm going to talk about a specific application. Say, This will be JPA based. We're talking about persistence, a standard Java EE, or maybe a Spring Boot application. That requires persistence. The code that, that I'm used for the presentation and the benchmarks can be reached from that particular URL. The one on the bottom is the same, but it's shortened. And I will tweet also the slides so you will get all the information. So the setting is the following one I was working with a customer. And they had a big standard JEE application. And、uh, they, had, they were running on WebSphere. I think it was WebSphere or WebLogic, one of these things that are kind of old. And they wanted to consolidate everything under one roof, under one,、um, one provider. In this case, they chose JBoss. So they had a lot of technologies from different vendors, and they wanted to put everything in one place. They needed eventually to migrate. From Eclipse Link into Hibernate. And they found out that Eclipse Link was giving them a lot of benefits with the caching support that it provides out of the box. But with Hibernate, you have to configure caching on your own way, and there are many ways to do it, and there are many different providers. So we didn't know exactly which one to pick. We had some measurements that show that Eclipse Link was very fast. The replies were in the two to four seconds range, so that was pretty good. But when we did the migration to Hibernate, the responses were coming from within 40 to 80 seconds. That was definitely not acceptable. So, what we had was measurements made by hand. We were looking through the log files, trying to match the entry point and the、uh, The outside point for the、uh, operations to see where were actually the timing. So that will not scale for the amount of measurements and tests that we needed to run. So, what we wanted to do eventually was to figure out if there was a combination, hibernate caching, that could work for this particular thing. We had the following candidates、uh, Infinite Spam, which is also from JBoss, Hazelcast, very well known. ES Cache, I think, is one of the earliest solutions, and Caffeine, which is another open source option. Actually, all of them are open source, and、uh, it's also very, very fast. What we needed was a way to make accurate measurements. That was really important to make sure that we can replicate the,、um, the production or the test environment so that we can have good numbers. Repeatable executions. So, our first approach, and、uh, this was kind of like the naive approach, we wrote a JUnit test. <coughs> and it kind of worked. The idea was to use an entity manager to load all the data, to put it in memory, and then using another entity manager, because both of them share the same entity manager factory, we will hit the second level cache and we will measure the operations made on the second entity manager. We chose to use H2 as an embedded database. We chose a small data set, and we simplified the parental relationship within the entities. We only had read only queries, and we run for 50 iterations. I'm saying this because even though the code was already running on the cloud, making sure that we were able to run all tests all, all day long for a particular scenario will take a long time for the IT infrastructure to set up. So, we decided to fake a little things by using embedded databases and a few other things. This will be important coming in the future. We、we'll、use Eclipse Link as a control. That is a time that we need to beat. We'll also configure Hibernate without caching. That will also be another baseline, see how it reacts. And the four different candidates. The code, the unit test, looks like this. Here's our very basic measurement. The important bit is right there in the middle. This one that says execute benchmark. This is the code where we're going to warm up the entity managers, and it looks like this. We create a factory spray, it's straightforward. Create a factory, create entity manager, load data, execute some queries on that, create another entity manager. This is the one that we actually want to measure, and then return. 
even though it's quite simple, it's, it, the looks can be deceiving because we made a mistake here. The list of measurements, which is the things that we are collecting, we decided to use a synchronized list. It doesn't make sense. So actually, all our tests were uh, slowed down a little bit. But the advantage is that all of them were slowed down. So we were back in the base. So we got these numbers. Eclipse Lean, as I said, was very, very fast, loading and then hitting the second level cache. Close to five seconds. Pretty good. Then look at the other ones. Hibernate without caching is quite slow. And Hibernate with plus the other caching <coughs> solutions turns out that Hazelcast is the fastest one, followed by, by caffeine. These, these numbers are measured in milliseconds. So we already had an idea of where things could go. OK. But warming up the cache, that operation is expensive. And uh, once we, so the conclusion is that once we have warming up the cache, it looks very similar to Eclipse Link. But there are a few other problems. Remember that we fake it out of the data. We change the uh, shape of the data, their relationships, and we're using an embedded database. If we were to run this in production, we will get uh, different results. So what happens also if the data set does not fit in the cache? We will have cache miss. So we need to replicate that as well. So we follow a, a more test. We add more uh, yay unit tests to do something like that so we can load and then remove from the cache or make it call again while the application is running and then hit it a couple of times then clear it again many many different things and eventually also instead of just doing sequentially we will do it in parallel with concurrency because in the real world scenario you have multiple users hitting the database at the same time the code is very ugly you will see it on the github um, um, repository, so that's why I'm not showing it, but it works. And uh, we got something like this. The control, I don't think it looks very well, but at the bottom, Eclipse Link is at this level. So that's our control. This is Hibernate without caching. The first hits that you see there is loading the data and warming up the cache. It's very, very expensive. But once it's loaded, most of the caching solutions are very close, very small. Um, and this is when we're using a big data set. The other one was a small data set. So it looks very good. Yeah. Eclipse Link and Hazelcast and, and Caffeine are here on the low level. This red one is InfiniSpan, so um, it's, it's spiking. But this one is ES Cache. It's going like crazy because it's accessing disk like crazy. That is what's happening. OK, not bad. But then here's something that we noticed. We're running so much code inside the same process, and we had to fake out concurrency. One thing that we're not taking into account is that the JVM, if we have generated a lot of objects, will eventually have to garbage collect that data. <laughs> Are our test times being affected by garbage collection passes? Is there something else that's going inside the JVM process that make our numbers go in the direction that will give us a false sense of security? So we need it another tool to make sure that we can eliminate all those things. And that tool is called JMH, which stands for Java Micro Benchmark Harness. So what we can do this, we can use JMH to run very, very tiny benchmarks all the way to the macro benchmarks. These kind of JPA tests can be seen as a macro because we had to set up the container, we had to set up the persistence, the database. There are a lot of things that need to be set up. The advantages of using JMH is that concurrency is supported out of the box. You can parameterize benchmarks. For example, we can say for the same test case, we can supply the, the small data set or the big data set. And we can have warm up iterations to make sure that the JVM process is already ready. All the optimizations, the JIT compilations have happened. So when we do the real measurements, it is like your production code has been running for a while, and you got the most optional, optimal time to do the measurements. I will not show you the code, and you can see in the repository, but here we got the numbers. At the top, again, Eclipse Link is our uh, uh, control number. And for the small data set, uh, when, we, no, when we're hitting the uh, L2C cache, we got this number, so it's quite fast, eight seconds, and this one is loading. 
and then we compare it with Hazelcast, which is the fastest one. It is very close to a Eclipse link. If we look at this graph, this is the small data set. Eclipse link is at the bottom. Hibernate without caching. And the other solutions follow closely. When we have the big data set, we expect a lot of cache means and file access. Eclipse link again is very, very fast. Hibernate without caching, a little better. And then the other ones are going really, really bad again. AH cache, don't use it. Again, this is using default configuration. And Hazelcast, again, is very close to Eclipse Link. So it looks like our solution is combining Hibernate and Hazelcast because it, it performs very well in the small and the big data sets. So everything was good. The customer was happy because they could turn from Eclipse to Eclipse Link from Hibernate and they can configure the caching. But remember that we were using fake data, an in memory database, and a few things. So we decided to run again this combination in production. And because we wanted to have everything JBoss based, we configured InfiniSpan. Turns out InfiniSpan was much, much faster, even much, much faster than Hibernate Hazelcast. It was 20% faster than Eclipse Link. That means that InfiniSpan and Hibernate have a really tight integration. And when you run everything within the same provider, you got much better results. Yeah, that was us when we obtained the numbers. So what is important to take away from here is that you, you can create your own test cases. You have to take, take care of if the JVM process is warm up, if that you have uh, no external noise for the JVM process, but also if you have stripped down your test cases to take everything away so that you can run as fast as possible, you are run, you will obtain a limit of what is the upper limit, how fast your system can be, but it's not as fast as production. My metaphor here or my comparison is you want to find out how fast a Lamborghini can go? Well, take out the seats. You don't need them. Take out the lights. Take out the, uh, the mirrors because that's how you lose weight. But can you drive a Lamborghini without seats and mirrors and lights? No, you can't. You have to run it in production quality. So if you want to do this, I would recommend you to start with test cases so you have a feeling of the code, and then you can turn it into JMH so you can make sure that your test cases and your benchmarks don't have any additional noise. Always remember, you eventually have to test in production. If you have the capability to test very fast, do it so. Iterate, iterate, and iterate. It's not enough to just do one test, get one number, say, oh, we're done. No, no, no. Test in many environments, test with many machines, test in production hardware. If we have data, let's look at the data. If we don't, if we have opinions, then it's anybody's game. Measure, don't guess. Arigato gozaimasu. Um, You want to see this? Mm -hmm. All right.